So we are back for our coffee chat. And Bryce, you're in a different location today. I am at my parents' house right now. I've got a sleeping uh, King Charles Spaniel right here, Miss Maggie. She might be, she might hear her snoring. But yes, I am at my parents' house right now. And I was telling Catherine, I don't have my light set up. I don't have any makeup on. I got a little mascara and a little lipstick on. That's about it. So <laughs> what you see is what oh, you get. Oh, cool. Well, I've had to shut the blinds. I've got my two babies in the background. Indy, stop chewing. Um, and um, yeah, it's weird. It feels like we're going to have a thunderstorm and a big clearing today. But we were going to have a chat today about stepping into your power because a lot of people are sort of saying you know now's the time for us all to step into our power and then and that looks very different for everyone and I'm also personally seeing on quite a few places almost a bit of shaming that goes with it in terms of if you don't step into your power in the way that I've decided it means then you're not really contributing that and nothing that drives me that drives me crazy. And you see that a lot in the spiritual communities as well. And um, I've said this on Aquarius Rising Africa before with our friend Shanti and Morne. There's one teacher I used to work with a lot. And he would always say, listen, all the trees in the forest are different. They're all different, but they're all reaching up for the same light. You know, it's, it's, there's so many different ways to, to step into your power. And I was telling you, Catherine, when you suggested us talking about this, one thing I know about, well, I don't know. You know, the, the, the little I know about human psychology, it seems when other people try to control someone else or control the way they do something, it's because they're feeling out of control themselves. And so when, if someone's shaming you for how you're doing something, usually that's a sign that they're not comfortable within their own sense of self. Yeah. And I believe stepping into your own power is actually stepping into who it falling into just into your sense of self as who you are as a person, healing yourself, working on yourself. You say things so brilliant, brilliantly, Catherine, when you talk about sports teams. You know, I'm not a big sports person, but I understand that on a team, every member of the team has a different job to do. You can't Absolutely. all be the goalie. Mm. You can't all be the main person kicking the, I don't know, your, your daughter would probably laugh at me trying to explain soccer. You can't be the main person kicking the ball. Like you can't, yeah. you all have different, you know, you look at a, American football. Um, the quarterback is usually skinnier than the linemen because they have different purposes. Exactly. And that's the thing in life. How boring would life be if God made us all the same? It's so important. I love that about the trees all reaching for the light because everyone's going through different stages of their lives. So, for example, now I've got grown up children. So um, my life is completely different when they were babies and toddlers and when they were going through school and everything like that. And you're meant to go through stages of your life, every plant, every animal, the seasons, every human. And to me, I just did, I've, I haven't put it up yet because I was a bit behind, but just a channel update. And I was talking about this, about what stepping into your power means. And for me, it means finding out what gives you joy, finding out how you love to contribute and show up in this world. And that is whatever that is. And also honoring where you, your family, your loved ones are at this time to say, you know, this is why not everyone's meant to be, um, you know, the leader taking you into battle. You know, you also need people that are going to cook the food and feed you and mend you and rescue you. Stay in the med tents. Yeah. Yeah. Collect so the water. Yeah. It all comes back again to this being happy with yourself and not comparing yourself. And that is easier said than done. And I know we talk about things that we notice a lot because obviously having channels, it's brilliant to get that interaction and you get comments. But you and I are both going to be speaking to Ismail Perez on Saturday, which I'm really, really looking forward to because we've got such different things to bring to it. And he's got such big, great conversation. But when you and I have a guest like that on a show, we're not expecting to agree with every single thing. It's not even in my consciousness. It doesn't matter to me whether I agree with it. I'm learning and listening with an open heart and an open mind. And then with a lot of stuff, it, I have to take it away because if it's something that I don't particularly um, have much knowledge of or experience of, I'm, you know, what I'm really trying to do is stop myself making quick decisions. So we can, we can all be contributing in our own way. And it's absolutely fine if we've all got different views of the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is for sure. For sure. And that's how we've, we've said this over and over again, Catherine, I feel like something really bizarre has happened over the last maybe 10 years. 
Mm. And it's like, and we see this hardcore on the other side of our timeline, the people on the left, like here in America, where you have this cancel culture, where if, if someone doesn't agree with you 100% on every single little thing, then you cancel them. And yeah. that's a new phenomenon. Well, at least for me, that's a new phenomenon. I know that that's um, a hu hugely indicative of communism, but just as, as far as social interactions, when most of my life, especially when I was a kid, it was just understood that you're, you're not going to agree with everyone on everything. And, and people didn't, you know, and sometimes for me, it's like, if I hear somebody's opinion that I don't necessarily agree with at this point, I don't even feel the need to express my opinion. If it's no. not a big deal, like if it's a, it's a little thing, if it's a little thing, I don't feel like I need, but people feel the need to like be right and be validated and be justified instead of just living within their own ideas and opinions and respecting others for theirs too. If someone's not hurting you, then let them be where they are on their journey. You know, it's, um, you know, I'll take Ste now Stephanie is here with me. It's Catherine just saw Stephanie. She's about to go and do another show, but we're doing a lot of filming up here. That's why we're up here at my parents' house, um, pulling cards at some historical places. And so Stephanie has had a chance to meet my mother and we were discussing, cause like my mother is a prime example. She's not where we are as far as like what she's willing to listen to right now. She's awake as far as she knows that the competition that happened here in 2020, um, was fraudulent. She's aware that that competition, you guys know what we're talking about, wasn't legit. She's aware of the system, the one world government system from the other side. She's aware of that. But when it, it she, she doesn't have this, she's not getting this. Um, but when it comes to other things, she's not there yet. She's not ready to hear about Tartaria. She's not ready to hear that. Some, and that's okay. You know, and, and so everybody's on their own journey and on their own level. And you, you don't know there's um, there's a saying that I love. And I'm going to paraphrase it. It's it's be kind to everyone because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what somebody is going through internally. So be kind to everyone. And so how dare we or some people think that we can like impose our chapter 10 to somebody else's chapter one. And then shame them because they're not at our chapter 10. You know, does that sense? Perfect. Yeah, and also there's a very good reason sometimes why nature protects you from knowing certain things at certain times. So, for example, I've had two children. Believe me, have giving birth is not easy. <laughs> um, I, but I wouldn't change it for the world. But it's comical because, you know, I had a lot of complications having my son. And I'm one of the ones where I was very grateful to be given an emergency cesarean, because if not, my son and I probably wouldn't have been here today. We joke in our family, you know, if I was a Labrador, I probably wouldn't be allowed to breed. <laughs> I wouldn't pass the hip score um, because I have the easiest pregnancies, but the births are a little bit problematic for me. And um, I, so I'm really grateful. But when I had my son, I got really shamed by a lot of people for having a cesarean. And I was like, do you know what? I'm so grateful because my son and I are here, healthy, on things. It wasn't a planned cesarean for cosmetic or easy reasons. It was basically an emergency. And without yeah. that, I wouldn't have been able to save my life. So I just felt, Indy, Indy, just telling my dog, she's got it. She's just really molten like mad and she's really itching. So, you know, everyone has got a different purpose. And, and most parents will tell you that when they're in full-blown labor and about to give birth, they'll be like, never having another child. And then the moment you've had that child, you are like, oh, well, next time. <laughs> and you've completely forgotten because it's so worth it for what you go through. Yeah. yeah. And that, to me, is just a classic example. If people aren't ready to see things like that, there might be a very good reason that we don't know about yeah. They might be going through grief. They might be going through illness. They might be going through financial strain. They might be. And, and our bodies and our minds are very good at giving us what we can cope with when we can cope with it. And if you then go in and make a decision that's not consensual to someone, you could actually be doing a lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely. When it's traumatic, it's, you know, with this great awakening, if you think about everything that's been exposed to us over these these drips of information that's that was for us too because we were in that position at one point and like my mother for example like if i step back and i look at my mother's situation you know she's in her late 60s both of her parents passed away when she was in her late 20s early 30s um her sister then passed away they went my mother and father went through a horrific divorce when i was a teenager there was a lot in her early life that was very traumatic even though i don't see her as being someone who has like anxiety disorders but when i i think for her like to understand at, at her age and this might be the same for a lot of people 
to understand that everything she was taught as a child was is a lie. And all those memories she associates with her parents and her sister and all that kind of stuff, there's there's emotional attachment to that. Mm. that and so when, when you, we start to think about that from a very human perspective, then maybe we don't want to push too much and allow people just to kind of wake up as they want. And it's been hard for my mother. My mother, the, the Bryce family, my, my name is my mother's maiden name. Big thing to do down here in the South is to give your kids your, your maiden name. Um, the Bryce family, my mom's family, her maiden name was Bryce. Uh, they're all doctors. Mm. And she loved, when I found out my great grandfather, my, gra my mom's dad's dad, a man named Joseph, Dr. Joseph Bryce, and he and I share a birthday same birthday. My mother was always very proud of that because she loved her grandfather. He died before I was born. But I actually, at one point, sent a letter to some of the Mason lodges in South Carolina to see if any of my family was involved in Freemasonry because the Bryce family is huge in South Carolina. The University of South Carolina has the football stadium is the Williams Bryce Stadium, huge family. And I got a letter back saying that, yes, Joseph Bryce died in good standing as a 33rd degree Mason. Well, we know what that means. And I presented that to my mom and it literally almost unraveled her because she also understands what that means at that level, which we can't talk about on YouTube, but you guys watching know what we're talking about, but in her mind, that was her grandfather and she loved him and he was so sweet to her. And I was trying to explain to her, like, even though he probably did some very sinister things, it doesn't negate the memories that you hold dear that you have from your childhood with, with him. But we do have to accept the fact that this explains a lot as to why the Bryce family was so powerful, if that makes sense. But so mm -hmm. if you think about that from a, a very human perspective, we're all having to face darkness that we never had to face before. And some people are going to be able to handle it better than others. And we- and so so it does it serve you? You know, how much about learning things does it serve you? So I always look, I mean, I find looking into the history fascinating and what's the real history. And, and uh, But I find it fascinating more for the why. Why have we been lied to? What, what's the motivation? Because that really tells me sort of what I need to know. But sometimes I don't think it's in people's best interest to do that. So, for example, a lot of the animals that I work with and have have had very bad beginnings. We've talked about this before. But it's not constructive for me to keep referring to them as rescue animals because energetically – I keep taking them back to that place where it's not constructive for them to go back there. They're not in that place anymore. It's good to move forward. And for get, getting back to the stepping into your power, I think part of that stepping into your power is looking at, you know, uh, for what we were just saying about what information do you share from a heart space in, for looking at that an individual. Now, if you're sharing information on YouTube or bit you to other channels, that's fine because people are choosing to listen to it. But if you're going into someone's home and having a conversation, is that going to be helpful? Because also we just don't know so much about it. We just don't know. You exactly. know, so what we know now, we've we've spoken like our gorgeous friend Jamie, you know, there's all this perception that everyone who's at a certain level of sport or or an actor or music, that everyone is tired with the same brush. And we know that's not true. So I think stepping into your own power is just for me, it's really important. It's just all about you and you being comfortable to be you and also you being comfortable to let others be them. It's just yeah. important. It's like, well, I think the same with the animals. When I went through trauma therapy myself, as I'm looking at Maggie as she's snoring, guys, yes, that is the dog snoring. It's not a demon over here. It's little or little, little, little dog snoring. Um, when I went through my own trauma therapy, my trauma therapist told me that it's not necessary to remember everything. There's a reason yeah. why the brain blocks things out. We just need to work through the emotions that are still causing you the anxiety. And that's that same thing. Like again, with my mother, is it necessary for some people to know that their deceased grandfather was a 33rd degree? Is, it, is that necessary mm -hmm. or is ignorance in that point bliss? As long as she knows the important things for now, you know, for me with the whole, we were talk about, talking about Tartaria and we're going to talk more with Ishmael Perez, stepping into the powers, understanding the power of your mind. And knowing that they they know this, the controllers know the power of your mind. And so you have to take that power back and filter through what you need to know to protect yourself as far as what the future outcome is going to be. That doesn't mean you have to go around and like bust other people's love bubbles that they have around them. You know, it's it's and in fact to do that. It's like, you know, when we look at like um, 
the first law of yoga is ahimsa or nonviolence. But there's also the law of truthfulness, satya. But is it necessary? It's like when, when somebody, I know, Captain, we have friends like this because we've spoken about this off camera. You know, if your friend is, comes in and they're wearing an outfit that you don't like that much, but they don't ask you your opinion, don't give it. Because yeah. that's mean. That's mean. If they ask you your opinion, that's a different story. But if they don't ask you, don't be like, girl, that, that outfit looks, you look fat. In that outfit. Don't, if they, that's just mean. That's just cruel. So the same thing goes with information and owning your own power. Part of owning your own power is being responsible with that power yeah. and not hurting other people with it. You know, it's so important, you know, concentrate, you know, the good back to the good old saying, you know, can you change it? If the answer is yes, change it. If it's no, well, don't worry about it and move on. And yeah. I think, yes, you know, that a lot of what we've known and has come to light over the last few years and much longer for others. The good thing is, is we can change it because when you do shine that light on it, it can't exist anymore. So that's a really positive thing for where people are speaking up and showing it because a lot of people are a lot more aware now. Um, you know, I always used to be as a young mom, I used to be very conscious when I saw things, you know, certain situations with one chil young children going into certain situations unsupervised. And I always had that sixth sense where I thought, it's not my child, but I'm keeping an eye on that. And a few yeah. occasions I did step in and, and do, certain, you know, remove them from certain situations, return them to their parents. And I just thought, and I never, no one ever didn't thank me for that either, because it was like, why would you not? You know, you're keeping yeah. an eye out for, for my child. And I think, you know, what I'd like to see sort of really moving forward, we were talking earlier with Steph about how it's so important for us to realise that sometimes when people are talking about a certain timeline or a certain future events coming, that's because we all know that where your energy is focused on makes that more likely to happen. It's just being cautious that you're putting your energy on where you want it to happen, yeah. not on what it's not like you can walk into any situation and you will pick up the good and the bad so where are you going to focus you're going to focus on the bad if you're potentially in danger and you need to get out of there but if not you can bring in more love into that situation by focusing on the good absolutely well it's, you know i was thinking about too it's like um like my brother-in-law's mother is from italy and her parents are have now passed away recently his grandmother just passed away but they, they had moved to america and um, Mamut, his grandmother, who died in her late 90s, was an avid Catholic, mm. loved the Pope. And at that point, it's like, if you're trying to step into your power, my sister was like, I'm not even going to say anything to her. What's the point? She's happy. Mm. She's not hurting anybody. She's not hurting any. She's a 90 year old woman. She's not hurting anybody. And if this is giving her peace and solitude, well, what's the point of me saying, telling her all this stuff right now and causing that trauma? And so yeah, it's, it's knowing. Yeah. And part, and part of that too, it's like with your time, the, the children just kind of keeping an eye on other people's children when you, it's like understanding. So it's like understanding your own boundaries. So even though at that moment, you maybe didn't say anything to the parents, you were just keeping an eye on the child. You were respecting their boundaries while also being a responsible human being, you know, and that was very wise and, and good, but it's also for all of us waking up, it's knowing our boundaries too, as to how we can't impose this thing on other people. We have to let people, it's like, you can't, you know, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about this, this meditation where they're going to like send light to all these people who are asleep to get them to wake up. And I'm like, that's not good guys. That's service no. to self. They didn't ask you to do that. They didn't consent to that. Yeah. All you can do is present the information on a public platform. Like we do. If they choose to listen, they choose to listen. If not, you are not the conductor of their karma. Their spiritual contract that they signed to come here is none of your business. So don't Absolutely. make it your business. Yeah, we've got enough, enough to look after ourselves with. Um, the other thing is, is I know you and I spoke uh, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. It's like um, if you listen to a certain band um, or a song and then there's this whole thing like, oh, you mustn't listen to that because now we think we know this about that person. It's like, yeah, but the energy and the memories, if they're good and positive to you, then that is only but positive. You're not supporting the evil no. by continuing to do that. So I think the more you can tune in with yourself, 
and see what is putting you in a state of sending out positive vibration for yourself and everyone around you and what is taking that away. And, and I'm learning that so much at the moment, Bryce. You know, I mean, I'm actually really grateful that things have taken as long as they have because I was very much, you know, a couple of years ago at the state of telling everyone. Yeah, same. I same. really yeah. was. And now I've really learned, um, you know, a really valuable lesson that is just not, it's not helpful, it's not kind, it's not fair. Yes, again, if they invite your opinion, but if not, then you don't know what the consequences of interfering with that are. Yeah, absolutely. You, you cannot, you know, it's like in the Mysore room and, and yoga, we have a responsibility as te mm. teachers to make sure people are safe and that they're not taking on too much that they can handle. And, you know, Guruji used to say, have a great saying, one time telling, two time telling, three time God telling. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't force things upon people. If you give them your opinion, but they don't take it, let karma play itself out. Let them, because, and I've said this before, like if, if people always want to be wise, you always want that wisdom. But wisdom is not gained from doing everything correctly. Wisdom exactly. is gained from the times you screwed up. And so don't rob somebody else, else of those opportunities to learn and those opportunities to have that friction within themselves and those opportunities to have those like come to Jesus moment themselves where they have to figure things out for themselves. You know, it's, it's not, we don't want to be boss. I mean, we don't want to turn into what our quote unquote enemy is where mm. they're bossing people around and telling them what to believe and what not to believe. And we don't want to be that. We, I, I want to be in a world that's more like, but the childhood I grew up in where it was like, live and let live. It's okay. If people have different opinions, that's what makes the world go round. That's what makes things interesting. So we, I think that, and we we're talking about that shit, like that is just, it's a shame that people are shaming people for not doing life the way that another person thinks they should do life. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing that a lot, you know, that, if you're not doing this, you're not helping the cause. If you're not doing this, you're part of the problem. And you're like, well, you really don't know what's going on in that person's life. You don't know what they are working on. You can't have it both ways and be telling people that the most important thing they can do is to work on themselves. But only if you work on it my way. Do all these other things at the same time. Because just working on themselves might be absolutely enough at the moment. That yeah. might be completely all that they need to do that they can cope with. And so... You just don't know. There's so many times I've been completely gobfounded where just a simple conversation will give you an aha moment and a, a, a different understanding of why someone has done or said something that they have. And it's one of the advantages, I think, of um, growing older, because you do, just like you said, learn from your mistakes. And when I've got it wrong, I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> Those are the most nice. Well, I'm laughing. It's a there for me. I mean, Catherine, I think you and I have both gotten some slack because we're we, you and I both enjoy you enjoy a glass of wine every now and then. I'll have a beer every now and again. Yeah. I'm not opposed to alcohol at all. At all. I'm not no. opposed to alcohol. There's a lot of people in the truth or community that think that alcohol is the devil and it's just inviting all these spirits and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not, I don't have a problem with alcohol. I can go out and have a couple of beers and stop and be fine for a week and not drink. You know, I, and, and I've always, I've never had bad issues with that. And so exactly. that's another extreme that people have even taken towards us that, that, you know, I posted on Twitter that I was having a beer the other night at a local deli down here. And then Stephanie shared a video of me being a little tipsy, trying to blow up a, a tarot card. You know, it was yeah. all in fun. But then you get that backlash. Like people all of a sudden think you're compromised because you, you dare yeah. have a beer. And it's that extreme thinking. It's that extreme thinking that is actually very mentally unhealthy. And I do want to say, if anybody is experiencing that where someone's shaming you or uh, poo-pooing you because you're not doing the thing, the, the, you're not doing this, this great awakening the way that they think you should be doing it, then that's their problem. Not Absolutely. yours. And it's, it's just been really great because I've really realized that. Um, again, I laugh at myself because sometimes <laughs> I need a lot of warning signals before I notice it. I can be a bit slow on the uptake in some circumstances. But I'm really, it's just so freeing when you do do it. And when you just think, you know, that's it. I'm removing myself from that situation and it feels much better for it. So I really hope that people today you know when they're thinking they're stepping into their power and i really hope that it's your power you're stepping into not your parents not your partners not your friends not ours not anyone else's that it's your power and that you're experimenting with how to express yourself learning 
<laughs> from the good bits and the bad bits and just approaching everyone and everything really with an open heart. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Just be where you are on the journey because it's not, and as cheesy as it sounds, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Too right. And so I'm really looking forward to some, seeing some of yours and Steph's videos. I'm really, really looking forward to our chat on Saturday night with Ismail Perez. Um, we're going to be covering loads and loads of stuff. Who knows? I've got loads of notes, but whatever's going to come up will come up. Um, people have been submitting their ch um, questions. So on the community page of my channel, you'll see I'm saying put your questions down here. And I am making a note of them and um, I'll get through as many as I can. So thanks. Have an amazing time with your parents. I will. Um, oh, it's just so lovely. It's so nice, isn't it? Just getting out there and having a break and being out somewhere different is such fun. And I will say, I was going to put this on my channel update, but I'll go ahead and say it now too, guys. If you follow me on Twitter, I'm doing updates, update videos of where we are filming and some stuff because it's going to take a little bit for me to get all the footage together for a full yeah. video. So if you follow me over on Twitter, you can see us being silly I've been watching them and they're just such good fun I mean I'm still a beginner on Twitter I I do post a lot of stuff there because it's really useful for me to go back and find stuff yeah. so I was looking at your stuff this morning it's hysterical yeah um, you have fun so you gotta have fun while you're doing it too that. you can't take take down a satanic club without having some fun while you're doing it so you've got to have some fun you've definitely got to have some fun <laughs> enjoy have some fun and we will be back on Saturday together yes yes absolutely bye, bye guys bye